So what chance does a teenager have to sleep more if their biology and their environment are stacked against them? Simone is a smart A-grade student, but her sleep cycle is completely out of whack. If I try and go to bed about 10, 10.30, I could be laying awake until about 12.30, 1 o'clock, maybe 1.30, and then I get up at 7. So that's anywhere from 6 to 7.5 hours of sleep, which really isn't enough. Without the sleep she needs, Simone's schoolwork is starting to suffer. She tends to just give up and say that she, she's no good at it and she's stupid, and I know that's not true. It makes me sad because it's affecting her self-esteem as well. She needs to be able to develop her full potential and she's just not going to do that with the situation as it is at the moment. Simone also suffers from a common teen problem, the tendency to ruminate. They've got a lot of these new events in their lives that they've had no experience dealing with and that can certainly play on their minds and what we find is as soon as they're sort of turning the lights off and trying to fall asleep at night and it's all silent and all dark, suddenly those thoughts just start to enter their mind and they're starting to think about what happened today, what are they got to do tomorrow, what's stressing them out. They get into a bad pattern and after they've stressed about what they've got to do for school, it's like, hang on, why am I sleeping? And they start to then worry about how come I can't sleep. Things have got so bad for Simone, she's been attending a sleep clinic. Today, she finds out her diagnosis. So Simone, we can see from your sleep diaries and from what you've told us that your sleep pattern is really all over the place at the moment. Yeah. We've worked out that you have what's called delayed sleep phase disorder. Okay. Okay. Delayed sleep phase disorder is common among Australian teenagers. Untreated, it can lead to significant psychiatric problems, the most common being depression. But Simone is determined to do something about her condition. I'd like to fix my sleep problems. I want to be able to not just lie in bed for hours, like hating it, just lying there, being frustrated, but feeling so tired, but not being able to sleep is the worst. For six weeks, Simone will try to reset her body clock using bright light therapy. Bright light therapy involves exposing the adolescent's vision to bright light. The body clock responds to a whole range of different external cues outside of our body, but the most potent one is bright light. On the first couple of mornings, Simone wakes when she wants, when her body clock is ready. Then for the next two hours, she has to get as much light as she can. The aim is to use light to shut down her melatonin. What is happening is that their melatonin starts to shut down and there are signals sent out to the body saying, wake up, body temperature starts to increase and eventually their alertness will start to increase. On mornings when there's not enough light coming from the sun, Simone uses a special bright light lamp. We try to really manipulate when they have light and when they have darkness. But the main part is when they have bright light. So the light lamps have to be bright enough so that they stop producing melatonin. Each morning, Simone gets up half an hour earlier. How's this little lamp going to reset my entire body clock and fix all my problems? She posts updates on a web diary. As the days go by, the treatment gets harder. Down to my 6am wake up tomorrow morning. I don't think I've ever gotten up 6am my entire life. It's better be worth it. The most difficult part of the treatment is not being able to sleep in on weekends. As soon as you sleep in, your eyes are not exposed to light, so therefore the body clock's not resetting. And that means that your body clock then starts to drift later and particularly for adolescents, they seem to just naturally delay quite quickly. In some instances, we've had them sleep in on one weekend and then suddenly they're back to square one, like really, really quickly. After two weeks of treatment, Simone's body clock is starting to respond. She's getting tired earlier in the evening. It's 9pm and all I want to do is go to bed. I feel so tired, especially after all this treatment, but I've got to stay awake till after 10 I definitely notice that I'm starting to fall asleep a lot quicker and I wake up in the morning and it's easier to get out of bed, less tired, less grumpy, I can focus properly. 
can't believe it worked, but it's so good. I'm actually getting enough sleep now. It's, it's great. I love it. In six weeks, Simone increased her sleep time by over an hour a night. For Simone, the pain of therapy was worth it to finally get a good night's sleep. I feel a lot better. I can get to sleep quickly, which is really good. Being able to fall asleep straight away is, is definitely good. You know, you don't have to worry about going to bed. You can just go to bed and just fall asleep. It's not some big problem that you have to worry about during the day. I can't sleep in on weekends or on school holidays anymore, which sucks. But it's, I'm prepared to put up with it if I can sleep. You know, it's worth it. It takes a determined teenager to overcome a severe sleep problem. But sleep deprivation shouldn't just be a problem for teenagers to solve. It's a bigger issue than a lot of people really think about. And um, if people are firstly aware and they recognise that there is a problem, then they will do something about it. Um, and it's not just the individual, I think it's really society and policy makers and health professionals. The double whammy of teen biology and our modern lifestyle means teens aren't getting the sleep they need. Increasing that sleep is a challenge, but if we don't take up that challenge, we're limiting their capacity to grow and learn.